Hi everyone, thank you again for watching Gaffer and Gear. In today's episode, I'm gonna take a look at a dual battery charger with a bit of a difference. So the difference is it has a built-in AC power inverter that can supply 220 watts. So when you're not using it as a battery charger, you can use the batteries to run your AC equipment that doesn't have a battery option. All right, so let's get straight into it. So this thing costs 300 US dollars or thereabouts. That's a lot of money for a dual battery charger. So you're not just getting a battery charger and then everything else is uh, a bonus. On top of that, you're paying a bit more to start with. So let's go through what we've got here. So at the moment, I'm running it as a power station, okay? So it's powering off the V-mount battery. So let's talk about the capabilities we have here. So we've got our AC out on the back, which is powering the light here. And we've also got some DC outputs on the front. We've got a USB-C output that can do 65 watts max. We've got four USB outputs, five volt, 2.1 amps each. We've got a 12 volt DC out, and we've also got two DTAP outs as well as the user interface screen that tells you what's going on. So let's run through what this can do as a power station. Okay, so if you're running it off two batteries, you can output 220 watts max AC or 180 watts of DC out the front or 220 watts maximum combination of both. Now that changes if you're running off a single battery, so you can do hot swaps. Now if you're running off a single battery, you can operate 100 watts of AC out, you can operate 100 watts of DC, or 100 watts combination of everything. Now you can hot swap here, but here's the thing with hot swapping. If you're in a hurry, it can fail. So my advice is put the battery on, count to five, and then take the other battery off. Okay, if you rush it, it can mess up. So let's see if I can get that to happen. There we go, it failed. So take your time on your hot swaps. All right, so let's keep talking about this as an AC output inverter. So one of the clever things they've got with the electronics in here is some battery management. So let's say one battery has more charge than the other one. I didn't put them both on with 100% charge. All right, so the battery that's got more charge in it the inverter will draw more power from that. So it'll get them down to an equal amount. And then at that point, it'll draw the power from both of them equally. So that's gonna help your battery management. So both batteries tend to go flat at very close to the same time when you're running off this system. All right, so let's say you're not running a light off it. Let's say you're running a data backup or your data management on a camera cart or something like that. All right, so what happens if we plug in our AC power, so at the moment we're running the light here off the batteries. If we plug in our AC power, what happens? Well, instantaneously, this becomes a battery charger and it's still outputting the AC to the light. So no worries there at all. You can patch AC in and everything's gonna work fine. But what happens if we disconnect the AC? Does this act like an uninterruptible power source and then switch instantly over to the batteries? Well, let's find out. No, it doesn't. So that's something to be aware of. Let's go through that scenario again and talk about how it affects the DC side of things, okay? So we're running this as a power station, powering it off the V-mount batteries. We plug our AC power in, and now the V-mount batteries start charging. Does that affect the power output capabilities from the DC outlets? Well, yes it does because the V-mount batteries use DC power to charge. So that does put some limitations on the DC outputs. So if we are charging two V-mount batteries, that limits us to 65 watts out. If we are charging one V-mount battery, we are now limited to 165 watts out. And if we are not charging any V-mount batteries at all, we've got our full 180 watts out. Now, the main reason I'm reviewing this is I can see this being a very handy addition to a camera department, but for the lighting department, not so much because the 220 watt internal inverter is a little bit limiting. I would have liked it to have been something like 350 watt. I actually don't have many lights, 200 watts and under, that can't run directly off a V-mount battery. The only reason I've got this is because it came in for gear review, but there is one exception to that where I think this is gonna come in very handy, and that is running practical lights 
in shot. So let's say I've got something that requires a Nix bulb, which doesn't have an internal battery. I can power that off this. So if I don't have access to a power outlet or we can't run a power cable, this could be my savior. Now, if I'm running one Nix bulb off this, the cooling fan won't turn on for about five minutes and then it cycles on and off. But what I have found from doing testing is if I run, say, two Nix bulbs off this, the fan again will fire up in about three to five minutes, but it'll stay on consistently. So that's probably one of my biggest negatives with this is the cooling fan noise. But in this sort of scenario, running some prac lights in the back of set that I can't run off a V-mount battery directly, this could be a bit of a savior for me. Now, a couple of things I better mention before I forget, this doesn't work with 26 volt V-mount batteries. The D-tap connectors down here, only work off battery operation, they don't work off AC power. And it also has a built-in torch that can illuminate your work area and also interrupt those intimate moments on set. The battery run times that I get running the inverter indicate to me that it is very energy efficient. Now I've got the 220 volt version and according to my power meter, it outputs between 228 to 229 volts consistently. Now this reading was taken when the batteries were very low and the inverter was driving a 150 watt light. Now the power supply in Australia is 50 hertz, and this metered in at 50.46. Okay, let's finish off by talking about this as a battery charger. So I've been using this as my primary battery charger now for about three months, just to thoroughly test it for the gear review. And the only sort of uh, criticism I've got of it as a battery charger is the on-screen display reads the battery level incorrectly in terms of percentage if you're running high capacity batteries. It will tend to indicate that the battery is at 98 or 99% when it's only at about 80% charged. Now it will correctly charge the battery all the way up to 100%, which I verify by putting the batteries onto other chargers. It just indicates that the battery is at 99% for the last 20% of the charging cycle. Well, that's another gear review done. Thank you for watching. See you on the next episode of Gaffering Gear.